Boom, what's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakian. Very excited to be talking about the value of art. We have Adelia Tumasieva joining us on the show. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much for coming on, Adelia. Of course. I'm My very, pleasure. Very excited for this. Me too. For those actually that don't know, Adelia, for what was it, about two years ago, you made the really cool logo that you can actually see on the coasters. Yes, that, the coaster design. The coaster yeah. design. <laughs> Adelia made the coaster design <laughs> that you guys have been seeing on the show for the longest time. Mm -hmm. And her art is just amazing. And I'm super happy this is finally happening. Adelia's background also, for those who don't know, is a designer, artist, and dreamer who captures life's most beautiful moments. She's also an organizer of Be Art, an art community in San Francisco. And you can find the links in the bio below to seenandfelt.com as well as Adelia's Instagram. Adelia, let's start things off by talking about how you got interested in art in the first place. Who were you as a kid? Um, sure, let's start there. So um, I've been making art my whole life period. I think I started at four, four years old and my grandma, she was just so supportive. She always said that I'm like the most talented like uh, person ever. And um, as a kid, you just like grow up in this. You're like, oh, okay, I guess I can do something with art. And that support, it, it went a really long way um, to get me where I am today. And I'm very, so, I'm so grateful for my grandma's support in that. Um, I grew up in Russia, by the way, <laughs> in Moscow. Um, it's a totally different culture. It's a different country. Um, it's a different mentality, too. And I am one of those people who felt like I was born in the wrong place. Like, you know, sometimes you're born in the wrong body. You're born in the wrong family. I was born in the right body or the right family, but in the wrong place. Um, and I just, I always was obsessed with America. Like, I was just obsessed with it. The American dream was pretty much everything to me. I used to talk to myself in English, which is weird. Like, it's weird. <laughs> I would be standing on my balcony talking to myself in English. Um, I learned English since I was six because I wanted to move here. And the reason for it is really because I was so attracted to this one American company that is still like a North Star for me. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. That one company <laughs> that I love more than any other company in the world. <laughs> and that company is Disney. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, Disney. I really... The first time I visited Disneyland was actually in Paris, in Disneyland Paris. And it blew my mind. It just, you know, I was growing up making art, and then I entered the place where I was surrounded by all this art made by these am amazing people. And it was functional, and it was engaging, and it was like a whole world. Like, it was a new world. It offered me hope. It offered me... Uh, just like it offered me a new perspective on what you can do with art and how you can change the world and you can change somebody else's day or you can change the course of a, the, of a, of um, the world's culture really you know which is what Disney eventually did yeah. you you can barely find a kid who grows up without Disney influence and America um, as we know it today is partially you know, so it's, it's so like Disney culture has penetrated American culture so much. Yeah. It just blows my mind to, th to think about it really. Yeah, from when you're talking about being a kid and having your grandma be such a, um, a proponent of art and helping you, that's so important to have like a family member or someone um, that can be uh, assi like assisting what a kid is passionate about to mm -hmm. pursue that. Um, and then also just like talking to yourself in English on the balcony. That's so funny. Yeah. You trained your, you know, you trained yourself to like follow a passion at a young age. You were like, I know that I want to go to the United States. And you knew that um, you went after Disneyland Paris, like 
you know, you go and you see, like you're describing, there's just such an, um, a crazy amount of influence that um, Disney has had on um, kids growing up in our world. Mm -hmm. And uh, I totally, um, I, I think what you're, what, another thing that you're pointing at, I think, is that the amount that like Walt Disney and all of the other um, designers and artists that have been a part of that, um, that organization have made a lot of different stories and they've made a lot of different designs of characters. And exactly. Yeah. yeah. Storytelling is such a crucial aspect to this because we perceive, we learn in stories, you know, and telling the right stories is really, really hard. I mean, like, think about it. Pixar and Disney and DreamWorks and Universal, those companies hire geniuses to tell stories. Something that anybody can do, but only few people can do it really the right way. And it's, it's really difficult to tell stories that would uh, appeal to different cultures too. You know, that would be universal, that would, that would like, an old person can understand it and a young person can understand it. It's really hard to tell those stories. And, somehow Disney does it, um, it just, it fascinates me and it's such a, um, it's such an inspiration for me, you know, like I'm trying to achieve that point. And uh, it's one thing to tell stories in a, in a media that is inherently storytelling based, like video, like right mm -hmm. now we're telling story, but how do you tell a story in a static form? How do you st tell a story through architecture of a place or interior design of a place that is static? There is no video of it. Um, how do you tell a story through an object or a painting um, or graphic design of a marketing ma material? Like how do you tell those stories? It's really hard and it's an art of itself. And that's what I'm learning every day, literally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Same, same here. When we're sitting down with you know like 500 of these different super smart people across different fields, we're taking what they're telling as their stories, and we're trying to make this into one big story. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. this is really fun to to do, and it's also really hard. And um, like you said, there's geniuses that have been hired into the, the best um, co companies, Universal, Pixar, DreamWorks, Disney, to be able to do things like tell stories that can be applicable to old people, young people, rich people, poor people, people mm -hmm. from different religions, different um, places around the world, all this type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And it is applicable, it's inspirational too, and that's the thing. Actually, in many ways, it kind of reminds me of like a lot of like the religious or myths, my, the mythological yes. storytelling. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All of those. I mean, like, think about it. Lion King is like the Shakespearean story, right? Hamlet, I think. Um, yeah, those stories, they have their like fundamental components, but then the way you adapt it to modern age and pe make people care again is what really is tricky. Like how do you make that story relevant today? And um, yeah, and there are, there are so many nuances that go into creating a compelling story um, because there are like, all the talents have to align for, the, for one common goal. And how do you describe that goal exactly? You know, you try to lead people, right? Like you are an entrepreneur, you try to lead people. I try to lead my people, my community. We know it's hard, you know, to just like align people toward the same goal. And um, how do big companies do that? <laughs> and like big companies, they have hundreds of thousands of people working for them, how do they align all of those talents toward the right, the same goal? Mind-blowing. They do it somehow. That's why, that's, that's why this, they succeed, really. They know how to do it. Yeah, yeah. So aligning towards the same goal, and then also you're giving the differences between things like uh, storytelling through a medium like video, which seems to be, in this case, a, a lot easier than if you were to just make a static image. Yes. Or you know, like the interior design of a place or the architecture of a building and try and have that tell a story. Mm -hmm. But we see buildings that have taken, you know, generations to build buildings mm -hmm. um, that have happened, or we've seen um, uh, also like the interior design of a building that can like, tell a whole story about natural light and about... Um, uh, maybe as you walk through it, you can see different aspects of it. Mm -hmm. So 
let's let's talk about you know what were you doing then when you were younger that then when you went to Disney World was this aha for you that you were like okay I know what I'm dedicating mm -hmm. my life to yeah um, it is it is very it's very hard to express it in words and I kind of wish I could just invite you to that experience which is exactly what I'm doing for my art mm -hmm. because it's so hard to explain in words but it was this deep sense of belonging you know when I went to so my first ever place um, that I went to when I came to the United States for the first time it was just a tourist trip with my dad we went to Walt Disney World because it was my dream for so long and once I entered Magic Kingdom, I think it was the first one, I just felt like I belonged there. <laughs> and, you know, as I told you, um, I felt like I was born in the wrong country where I did not belong, unfortunately. Um, and how come here I am in a foreign country with a foreign culture, um, foreign language that I semi-speak <laughs> to myself, <laughs> But how come I feel so welcome here and it's such a warm environment and I feel most myself as I have never felt before. Like that feeling just struck me and it, it just like, it, um, it penetrated my soul so deeply that I couldn't shake it off. Like that was pretty much all I could think about ever since. Um, and that's why I really wanted to work for Disney. Because I was like, how the hell do you design that? How the hell do you make people feel that? I would sell my soul to devil to work for this place. And, and it is very important to note um, that Disney is a very consumer, like they rely on consumerism. And I, it's not like I'm anti-consumerist, but I'm not a consumer. I don't see myself a consumer. When I go to Disney parks, I don't buy doll whips and bunch of Mickey ears and all of that. I don't do any of that. I don't have a single bought thing from a Disney World. S seriously, I'm not a consumer. I'm a creator. I'm a co-creator. And I want to be a co-creator of similar experiences that Disney introduces into people's lives. You know, boom. I, yeah, boom, <laughs> boom. baby. That's um, what's up. Yeah, I, I saw that that was um, a great example of how you create experiences that mean something to people and I wanted to do the same and since that trip um, I was 15 at that time that was my goal like I want to work for Disney I will do whatever it takes to work for Disney I want to work for Disney I want to learn how they do what they do um, I, I want to make an impact and I came back to Russia. I brainwashed my family with wanting to work for Disney. Um, and, you know, one day um, my dad, I guess he was doing great in business or something. So he had some spare cash. Um, and he was like, hey, do you want to, like, study in the United States? <laughs> he asked me that and I was like, yes. It was, you know, like it was everything I ever wanted because studying in the United States would get me closer to working for Disney. So um, I applied to 12 schools, I think. I got into all of them except one. <laughs> I chose San Francisco because it's in California and I got some scholarship. Um, and then I, I went to an art school here in San Francisco. <laughs> Wow, just the way that you expressed the, the story of when you land in, in Disney World um, that there's a feeling that you get that mm -hmm. is like so, it's expansive, it's beautiful, it, it's, it's, it's like so many people put in so much hard work in order for you to feel something. Exactly, exactly. I'm so glad you mentioned that because there is so much hard work that goes into it and you know it. You know, you might not know anything about architecture, interior design, or imagineering. Um, you might know none of that, but you know that somebody cared so much, that somebody dedicated their lives working for this to bring you that. You know, there is something so noble and so 
like it just creates a community. It creates a community over this thing. It's creators and consumers, and they, they are a community, which is the most beautiful thing about Disney to me. They have a lot of people working for the company, but a lot of people receiving the gifts of that work, which is like that exchange is just so beautiful. Yeah. And then now it's a big inspiration for you and now you're teaching so many other people that how can, how can we make things that really when somebody immerses themselves in the experience of what we're um, sh showing to them or what they're experiencing through our art, can we really move them? So can we really make something yeah. that them feel something really powerful yeah. from within? Like, yeah, that, that is such an important aspect to the things that we make. And like you said, you're not there you know, consumerism, buying the different things. Mm -hmm. You're there because you gain so much inspiration and then you're out co-creating the future. Yeah. And I think that's another huge component that we definitely preach on the show as well. So I'm, I'm glad that's mm -hmm. um, what you brought up. Let's, um, now let's, yeah, so let's talk about then as you end up um, <laughs> doing the actual internship at, at Disney World mm -hmm. um, and then uh, also, well, let's, yeah, go let's, ahead. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> let's preface a little bit. Um, so I went to school for five years, and on my final year, um, I was applying to Disney internships like crazy, like crazy. I applied so many times, I can't even count. I, I think I applied 27 times. Mm -hmm. Like it was, a, it was the most stressful period of my life because that's literally like, I came to this country to do this and now I get like rejected left and right because I can't get an internship. Like it was very humiliating almost, you know? It's like, I'm like, I know I'm worth it. Like I know I'm the right person, please, please give me a chance. And I think I applied 27 times, which is a lot a lot of rejections and one of them worked out. Yeah. You know, one internship worked out. That's resilience right there, yeah. Uh, Determination. You just, you gotta. Perseverance. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then I was so happy to accept that internship and that internship happened to just absolutely change my life. I just absolutely, it was the best thing ever. Um, honestly, the pay was almost non-existent. I mean, the pay was very low, which is something people don't realize about Disney internships. Um, but the thing about it that was so life-changing is that I got to see the inside of how the company works yeah. and what motivates them. And I happen to be on the team that <laughs> is literally motivating other employees to do good work and to create, to make magic for somebody else. Like I happen to be at the core of what I wanted to be. Like I just manifested it into my life. Mm -hmm. Like it was, it was, yeah, yeah. it was beautiful. Yeah. Um, it was a seven month long internship and I cherished every single moment of it so much. By the way, it was in Orlando, it wasn't in California. So I had to move entirely and get a car and I got to drive my own car on those like huge Florida highways and experience torrential rains and everything. I fell in love with Florida as I've never fallen in love with anything else, which still very much impacts my, all my work, just Florida. Um, and uh, when I was doing my internship at Disney, I realized that I'm not gonna stay. <laughs> I just realized that I'm not going to stay. It's just not going to happen. And not because they wouldn't hire me, um, but because of some, a combination of things. Some paperwork didn't line up. I had a boyfriend in San Francisco whom I really wanted to go back to. So I, you know, I knew that I would be coming back to San Francisco. And I just realized that, you know, all of this beauty, all of this like hard work that I've been working for, is endless oh and what is it? finite oh it's, it's finite yeah yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna end it's gonna end yeah okay because I'm not gonna stay in the company you know like I realized that oh but then but you took away so much though to, <laughs> to go and get inspired by yeah exactly yeah. exactly so it's technically it is endless then because you do yes, learn so much and then you endless. go and do it yeah and I promised to myself that you know once I work for Disney, I will never stop working for the same values as what Disney stands for. Mm. I will never stop doing that. Um, 
I will, I will always work for the same values. So basically, in the middle of my internship, I was like, okay, I'm not gonna stay, so I gotta make the best out of it. Like, I gotta just like absorb all the vitamins from this internship and to energize me for the rest of my life. Like, I gotta do it. I worked for this way too hard. I gotta do this. And um, I was looking for a way to to grab onto that momentum, you know, that momentum, it was spinning, it was evolving, mm -hmm. I was so on top of my wave. How do I encapsulate that? How? How? I'm a designer. I went to school for graphic design. I know how to think as a designer. And I decided, you know what? I'm going to encapsulate that feeling in an art form. Mm -hmm. So that art, so that that feeling lives on and on and on after I move on. And the, I think the main piece, can we jump onto the, the drawing, the first one? So this is where you started actually piecing together yes. the initial um, sketches and art pieces yeah, exactly. that you were trying to kind of like, <laughs> you were sponging in, this, you were yes. like, how do I, pra like you're basically like, how do I keep oh, this as, sorry, yeah. the previous one. <laughs> How do you, you kind of want to like keep it as like inspirational material for you and yeah. like put the practice in yourself? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. So I started doing those plein air drawings in the park. I would go to Magic Kingdom and I would sit right there and I would like sketch out um, this French corner, for example. Uh, and it would take me about an hour and a half. But what it provided me with, um, I trained my eye to see every single detail. Yeah. Because when you draw something, you need to see it first, right? And oftentimes, we don't see things. We just glance at them, you're like, you glance at this palm tree and you're like, it's a palm tree. I don't, I don't need to look into it. But with this work, you have to look into every single detail. So for me, painting this house, for example, I learned so much about architecture. Just, just architecture and like a, you know exterior finish and color scheming and proportions. I learned so much, so that's how I absorbed that. Wow, then, um, <laughs> that's a good way to learn about the nuance in exactly yeah, in the details. Like you gotta see, and I think p yeah. painting is so beautiful because you have to see in order to represent it properly. You can't just assume that it is that way. No, you have to see in an, in this slight like unbiased way. Um, so then another milestone project for me um, was making a flower lamp. <laughs> I love these. They're so amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Um, that was my first baby. And I came up with this idea at a meeting. And it was also like my endeavor of how do I encapsulate this amazing feeling of being on top of my wave and being so inspired. And I had this old Ikea lamp that I absolutely hated because the, the light was so harsh. And I was doing felting at that time too. Mm. So I was like, oh my God, I can make petals, like petals for the flower. And then I can encapsulate the top of the lamp so that it dis the, the felt disperses the light so nicely. Mm -hmm. And I came up with the idea at the meeting at work at about 2 p.m. Then I couldn't wait to go back to my home. Then I went to, back to my home. I spent 12 hours working on this baby. Yes. I felt it the whole thing. By the way, for those who are not familiar with the process, um, this beautiful uh, pink color comes from avocado pits. Like you just boil them and then you put wool felt into it, right? You put wool into it and then you boil it for another 30 minutes and then it's pink like this. What? It's magic. It's, it's magic. Yeah. Seriously. So, um, How do you learn stuff like that? That's so trial and error interesting. I, exactly. Yeah. Let's boil avocados and see if putting wool, <laughs> wool in it will make this color. Yeah, I knew yeah. that from school. Um, that's interesting. So Who was I, the first person that discovered that? That's what I, that's what I, I know. Yeah. People are so wild. Yeah. Um, so I created this lamp and it just, it just stroked, did I, did I say it right? Uh, stroke the cord? Yeah, yeah, stroke the cord, yeah. I was like, this is, this is it. This, in, this accurately translates how I feel at this stage of my life. Cool. I'm blooming <laughs> right now working for the company that I love. I'm blooming, I'm 
and I'm creating myself, you know, like it's, it's not a real flower, like I created it. So I realized that I can create my own future. I can create my own path. It doesn't have to depend on anything else. I can create my own world. You know, I don't have to grab onto being attached to Walt Disney World or, or Disney Company. Mm -hmm. I can make my own world. I love that. that was, this was kind of like your inspirational kick to mm -hmm. go and take what you learned and then go and create your own. Exactly. I love that. Yes. Yeah. And Walt Disney, just as a, you know, as a character, as a person, he is, nobody is as inspirational to me as Walt Disney because he made, he dreamt, he dreamt a lot and he made it happen. So it's one thing to be a dreamer, you know, it's like, oh, I could, like, wouldn't it be nice to do this and that? But like, you have to work hard to make it happen um, as well. And I work really hard on finessing those lamps. I know it's not perfect. It's far from being perfect. And I want it to be perfect. You know, like this, the stem is flimsy. And just generally, I treat it as a prototype. So I went on to create all of those other prototypes to advance my technique, you know? Like, yes, it, it capsulates that feeling, but I also want it to feel nice. I also want it to maybe mean something to other people, you know? Potentially, maybe um, people would want to buy one of those lamps. I wouldn't sell any of my lamps as they are right now because they're not ready. Mm -hmm. They're prototypes. And um, can we go to next pictures, please? Thanks, Ronnie. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> funny, funny thing about this one. So th that was the first lamp. Uh, when I made it, I was like, I can't take pictures of it at home because that wouldn't be the right setting. So I went to an anthropology store <laughs> and just placed it there and took pictures <laughs> at the anthropology store. <laughs> This, they were very amiable and very supportive of it. <laughs> they were, that's great. Yes, that's great. they were like, oh, that's beautiful. Did you make that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and I honestly think that one of those lamps, it would be lovely to sell them at Anthropology at some point. So then I went on and to- There's so many places that would, yeah, really I, enjoy this, and especially in the homes and the offices. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It, Thank you. Yeah, yeah, this, it, it also is, so many people are looking for something that is, um, that can t bring them to nature. And mm -hmm. I think when we're spending 90% of our time indoors, seeing things like this can really make us you know, smile and tie us. For into, sure, for sure. Yeah. Yes, and, and it's also a very organic shape. Like there's nothing modern about it other than the base. Yeah, there's nothing um, modern about it. The, the, also another interesting thing to potentially do would be to see if there could be like a little like scent that's emitted <gasps> from yes. it. Yes. <laughs> then Actually, I used yeah. to like spray <laughs> perfume <laughs> on it so that it smells like peony or something. Um, so then I went on to create more lamps because, you know, I got the momentum going. I, w I want to make more of them. Mm -hmm. And this one was my thesis project, so to speak. Mm -hmm. I think people think of thesis projects as like the final thing that you do in school. But I think, I th I think we should always work on thesis projects. That's right. We, we <laughs> have at any single, at any point in life, we have something to say. You know, if you're a creative person, you, you always have something to say. You want to like, spit it out into the world, but you have to do it in a deliberate way, which is why thesis project is so useful. So I made this project. I made this for about three months. I was just working on this very, very, you know, hands on. Um, and I tried to perfect my technique. I tried to refine my color scheme. I tried to make it a marketable product. And most importantly, I really tried to set a mile, to set the next stepping stone for me. Mm -hmm. You know, I made this, but I want to move on. You know, that's in, the, that's in a certain way, uh, in, a, in some way it's in the past. Like I want to move on, what's the next step gonna be? Yeah. So then I developed this uh, thesis project with five lamps and can we click a little bit more? Um, and um, this one is a cherry rose. Yeah, lamp. the cherry rose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I named them all after lyrics of Lana Del Rey songs because oh. I love Lana Del Rey. <laughs> um, this is the monitor. Okay, next you one. You <laughs> were also you were also dealing with things like um, making sure that they're you know safe, like electrically and stuff like that. Yes, correct. These are very important things mm -hmm. to be thinking about, and I th yeah. I'm glad that you were able to figure out that it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
yeah, um, it is very important, especially if I want to sell them. I mean, I use it. I use it every day and I know that it doesn't get hot at all yeah. because it's LED light um, and felt is actually, it requires huge temperature to even set it on fire. Yeah. Um, so I know that it's not gonna catch fire, I have huge confidence in that, but I wanted to make sure, so I contacted a lot of people yes. who are like electrical engineers and stuff like that and um, they um, all proved that, you know, it's not gonna catch on fire, so we're good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's, this project is also how I developed this affection and love for flowers. I mean, yeah. when you come, when you see it like at the other side of your room, just standing there, it really does look like a real flower. And yeah. it just brings so much joy into my life. And I don't understand how flowers are just so beautiful. They're just they so beautiful. Are, yeah. They don't have to prove anything to anybody. You know, they're just, they're just gorgeous. Like, I just love that. I wonder if anyone doesn't like flowers. I doubt that there's like <laughs> anyone that is like, I hate flowers. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, wait, why? why uh, yeah. th there's another good quote I was telling you earlier. It's that the earth laughs in flowers. Mm -hmm. I love that quote. I it's, love that quote too. It's such a, flowers, and there's so many flowers. They make us so happy. They smell yeah. so good. Yeah. They're also really important for the ecosystems of mm -hmm. bees and their pollination. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. Yeah, insects to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to reside on and within and Yeah. Rose gardens are amazing places for humans to go. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. This was my wine rose lamp. Um I also did did make a point um to make to post edit the pictures so that it looks better than the actual prototypes. Um I be, because, you know, as a designer I want to keep the momentum going, which means I have to inspire myself. I have to think of my, my art better than it actually is. I can't be a realist. Like, if, you, if, you, if you're an artist, you can't be a realist. To a certain degree, you can, but you need to look further down the line and be like, I want to be there. And mm. you need to see every artwork as a potential for something greater. You know, when you have a blank piece of paper, you can't be, oh, I can't draw. I, I, I really, like the last one was shit. I can't, I can't really make it happen. You can't approach a painting with that mentality. You need to think of it, this is masterpiece to be discovered. Yeah. How do I make it happen? Yeah. You know, that's why, that's where dreaming comes in. You, I dream a lot. I dream out loud every yes. time I bike. I. I speak to myself yeah. because I dream, that's how I dream. Yeah. Every time I'm at home by myself, I talk to myself and I express what I want to get out of life. That's how I dream. I dream on paper, I dream in felt. I just basically dream things up. Like that's, that's, the, um, that's the main like, aspect of my art I think is, I just dream out loud. And that's what the dream, my dreams look like, my rose garden dreams. And then that gives you, uh, that p becomes part of the North Star, part exactly. of, yeah, and then it, you set your steps yeah. to get to those yeah. locations. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's exactly how Walt Disney did it. I mean, how else would you do that uh, if what, what he did, like his cartoons, he did it in, in the Great Depression. You can't be a realist during the Great Depression. Everything sucks. There is no money. There are poor children on the streets. You know, like you can't be a realist, so you have to be a dreamer. And that's how you lead people beautiful places. Because if you can, he said it, um, if you can dream it, you can make it. Mm -hmm. It goes something like that. Yeah, yeah. And it, it really is a mentality that is still um, exists in the company. And it still inspires me so greatly. Likewise, if yeah. I can think about it, yeah. I can make it happen. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, that's so so beautiful. <laughs> I'm all, I'm just I'm also so happy to now, you know, better be able to take in the different pieces of you um, that I think, you know, made you into who you are today and I think can help so many other um, kids around the world that care a lot about art to surround themselves with we'll get to these communities of art mm -hmm. as well in a little bit, but 
the idea of having in people around you, your parents or people in your community, other kids that you can make art with, right. that you can find um, really inspirational people like Walt Disney, these, these, these experiences that really uh, move you to, um, to pursue things that, that you care about making, and actually going and physically doing it, like you dream it and then like physically go and make it. Yeah. And you have to do things like sketch to find the nuances mm -hmm. and things and yeah. you know become really good at that. And that's, I like that a lot. Those, those components totally make a lot of sense about you know, who you are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. And community matters a lot. Um, should we talk about it right let's now? Do, let's do quick on the way. So this is, so just quick on the way. Okay, so the, um, the, the, the scene and felt um, is, the, is the body of work of, of your yeah. art. And then um, the flower lamps are one component of that. Yes, correct. And these are prototypes, but soon um, you're looking to potentially um, help uh, get them in for, for people to, who want to bring them into their homes or into their yes. offices and things like Potentially, that. Potentially, but it's really not the cornerstone, not of, the cornerstone of what I do. Uh, it yes. really is just like a cherry on top, like, oh, it would be nice if sometimes I could make money of it. But honestly, I don't, that's not what I live for. I live for to capture life's most beautiful moments yeah. and capture it so that it creates more beautiful moments, you know, so that, that it yeah. just like builds on itself. Yeah, yeah. And um, true, like felting is just one of the things that I express that. Um, I also do a lot of paintings. Let's do it. Um, Let's show these. Sure. Yes. Okay, so I painted this oil painting of my, sorry, um, this oil painting of Rose from Titanic. Yeah. Because it is my favorite, absolute wow. favorite movie. Um, and I, I, I couldn't tell you how many times I watched it. It's probably thousands at this point. No way. Yes, I watched what? Titanic way too much. <laughs> just on loop. Like it would end, like four hour movie would end and I would just like start it over, literally. I, wow. Yeah, that's, that's how I used to watch it. And I would always watch it in the background when I was like making art as a child. But what I really love about Rose's character is this, like she knew what she wanted and mm. Jack helped her uncover what, what she actually wanted, you know? By the end of the movie, she doesn't need any money. She doesn't need this horrible husband, fiance. Um, she doesn't need that freaking diamond thing. She doesn't need even her, like to be affiliated with her mom. Like she sac sacrifices the relationship with her mom just so that she can be herself. And I, not the mom part, but I really respect that. I just really respect that you know who you are and yeah. you just go for go it. Go for it. Yeah, just go for go it. For There's going to be a lot of challenges of that, that are like family might be a challenge, friends might be a challenge, yeah. money might be a challenge. Yes. But these are tests of faith. Yes, yes, exactly. And um, when they, those challenges come, you just have to stay aligned. Yeah. Um, you just have to. This is hard work. Oh, <laughs> this you. is hard work. How do you put? How do you put this together? But it was also, you know, like there is a great deal of technique that goes into creating like a realistic painting like this. Like it goes in layers. Like the first layer, for example, is green. Like her face is green. It looks morbid. <laughs> um, and I used a very uh, old Renaissance technique to paint this. But this is another line of wow. those things that I make to, to just like d d d refine or define myself, define who I am, what influences me, just to like ruminate on all of yeah. those thoughts. It's very, very important. And I think sometimes it is seen as a selfish thing, which is a wrong way to see it. Everything you do is a selfish thing. Um, but also it's not a selfish thing. You just, you have to know who you are before you help anybody else. I think mm -hmm. we all agree with that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like you just, you just can't go on pretending like you're somebody else or conforming to something that you're not. Um, yeah. So yeah, she, she's just a role model for me. I love how Rose is a role model for you and I love the story that you're sharing with us about her. And, and don't the, you love yeah. her name too? Rose. <laughs> how, I know, right? How synergistic is the universe sometimes, I, right? Rose, exactly, Rose, yeah, exactly, yeah. yes. That's, that, those little signs, um, <laughs> some people say those are the signs that you are on the right path, on your North Star path. That yes, those things are happening. yes, exactly. So this is, I mean, I just want to say like the amount of detail here is just so cool. Like the little, 
the little like reflection in the eye, the little light yeah. like reflection in the <laughs> eye, and, yeah. and just like how much how hard it is to make every hair, every eyelash, every eyebrow, every nuance and s color of skin, mm -hmm. and you honestly, make it so like, real. Like, yeah. Honestly, looking at this, I'm like, I could do so much better if I were to do it again. That's badass. <laughs> That's badass. That's what's up. That's the mastery. <laughs> I love that. Um, yes. Yeah. So, so that's so that's oil. That is oil. Yes. yes. And, and I really don't like. I really don't like. S just like uh, cornering myself into one technique. Like I'm an yeah. artist. Like yeah. I, I want to express something. It all it all starts with what do I want to say to the world about my my path or just like my journey or who I am, what do I want to say? Not to anybody in particular, just, just to myself, you know, sitting in the room, who am I? Yes. That's where it all starts. And then the technique comes in and then I can use a variety of mediums. It can be graphic design, it can be a digital like movie, um, it can be a watercolor painting. I really don't like cornering myself, which is why it's so hard to define myself as like, I only do watercolor. No, I don't. Like, yeah. I don't only do felt lamps. Um, although it is easier for people to grasp. Oh, it's like, oh, it's Adelia, she does felt lamps. But Adelia also does so many other things. Adelia is just an artist. <laughs> and I just, that, that's, that's who I am. I am an artist. And when you get really good at a bunch of different art techniques, they stack into and on top of each other and it helps you see art in completely new ways that if you were just super deep in just one technique, you wouldn't. So exactly, it's exactly. A, it's like the multidisciplinary lens, like if you yes. pull different disciplines together, in yeah. this case, different art techniques mm -hmm. together, they help a lot. Yeah, exactly. So then, okay, so the another component is oil, mm -hmm. oil paintings, and then you also have watercolor paintings. Yes. All right, let's, let's okay. show, because these are, <laughs> and you do these so often, like, your, your Instagram page is so cool. <laughs> Everyone needs to go and follow Adelia's <laughs> Instagram page. There's so many examples. Are we translating? Yeah, we are. We're showing Great. some of that right now. And it's just so cool that there's so many like examples of you just being able to see something and then just put it into watercolor. <laughs> and like they're, they're gorgeous. Like, <laughs> of course, there's tons of flowers here. There's tons of landscapes. Yeah. This one of the sea cliff area is so beautiful, mm -hmm. too. Like, I love this one a lot. Like, you just did such a good job. And it's just, I love it. I love it. And I really noticed that a watercolor, 50% of a, a painting's success is what the mentality that you go into it, you know? I tried it a couple of times. I was like, oh, I'm going to create beautiful paintings for Instagram. Nah, doesn't mm -hmm. work that mm -hmm. way. I wouldn't even post that painting. That's how bad it usually turns out. Um, the, the important thing for me is to go into it and be like, I want, like, I'm going through something in life, something hard, mm -hmm. and I need closer alignment. You know, I noticed that when um, I had certain crises at work, for example, like I hated my work, I cried every single day for like hours at work. You know, I hated my work. Um, I would come home and I would, I would go um, into the park, for example, and I would find flowers and I would paint those flowers. It would momentarily align me to something that I ought to do. Yes. You know, I don't need to think about all this stuff that just, you know, all those challenges, all those things that you have no control over, really. Um, I don't need to think about them. I just need to think about where do I need to go? What does it take to get there? And flowers just happen to be one of those things that they point me the right way every time. So I paint a lot of flowers. Uh, which camera should I be showing? Yeah, it? this one's good. This Great. One right here, yeah. um, so I, I paint a lot of flowers. It usually takes about 30 minutes maybe. Um, it's to... so beautiful. <laughs> Pass them to me afterwards okay, so, right. I can, <laughs> so I can adore them too. Yeah. Um, wow. And there is, all my art is observational. Um, it's not abstract. I, I don't do abstract. 
Um, I do observational because it is very important for me to ground myself. You know, like I, as I mentioned before, I need to see things. I need to see them clearly and I need to be honest with what I see. You can't be dishonest in watercolor. Mm. Again, like you can't be dishonest. Mm. You have to be so honest with like what you see because um, that's how you will get that realism, you know? The life does not work by your, your rules, you know? You can't impose them on, mm -hmm. on anything. These are so beautiful. Thank you. So what does flat, when you do um, have these moments um, mm -hmm. that you're capturing like Earth's beauty in a sense, mm -hmm. um, then what, what, are you, what are you feeling when you're doing this? Um, I feel, again, that sen sense of belonging. Yeah. You know, just like when I went to Disney World for the first time, I felt like, oh my God, this is where I'm supposed to be. And every time when I have anxiety, at, like wow. anywhere, anxiety about, oh, I'm not, I'm not quite doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Like that feels wrong. And or like um, that social dynamic was um, a bit, I don't know, like I didn't feel myself doing that. And painting flowers just, grounds me and it's not like I'm escaping that I'm actually thinking um, every time I paint anything um, okay just the rest yes yes <laughs> every time I'm painting anything um, wow. I'm thinking deeply about those things that are going on with my life and in a sense that's how I process life you know I'm just not I don't I really hate feeling anger like a anger about something you know like oh, like, I'm not paid enough, I'm, I'm underpaid. And then I just like, all those toxic thoughts, I just like keep, keep flowing. Yeah. Um, so when I do paint, those toxic thoughts, they just, yeah. they, they lose their tox toxic component. Yeah, like, yeah. they just become one of those challenges in life that you just go through. But since I'm like, I know that I'm on the right, right path just by doing it. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm secure that I'm doing, I'm going through things that I ought to be doing. And life, life just goes on. Like, life is life. I can't, you know, I can't make it prettier or better. I can just change my perception about it, really. And that's how I change my perception or attitude yeah. about it. I, I, w I hope that we can um, structure a social fabric in the future where it's easy for people to do, easier for, pe for kids especially to do what they love mm -hmm. um, and not necessarily even have to go somewhere else where they don't find themselves in flow just so they can have a couple hours of flow after. Like, right. I think that's ridiculous. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It used to not be here so much in the past. Um, when we were in our more formative years of our origins of our species, and now mm -hmm. it's um, it's almost the toxicity of the of the system that we've developed that is pushing us in the direction. So just mm -hmm. you're a role model for people to be able to pursue this in the time that they have to um, yeah. to align themselves with the North Star. Yeah. Can we see some of the other? The other <laughs> sure. Ones? These are so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so these ones, okay. Um, I do a lot of like interior wow. sketching and these ones I did at this Victorian hotel in Vancouver um, called Amethyst Inn. You should it's definitely check it out. the same color as your dress right now. Yes. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to match my everything in my everything, life. Everything, yeah. Yes. <laughs> wow, these are so good. And Italian. you know, like I saw them. Um, I. It's a Victorian hotel, and Victorian era is known to be very highly ornamental, yeah, right? Yeah. So it's pretty difficult to draw ornamental stuff, and that's why it was so, you know, challenging, but like very pleasantly challenging for me to draw all of this, yeah. because there's so much going on, but what do you concentrate on? And how do you say, how do you tell the truth without overwhelming with information, you know? Like I wanted to capture of how it felt in that hotel. And honestly, that, that's my boyfriend <laughs> <That's right. Yeah. laughs> working. What's up? Well, he was working. I was, I was running around the hotel and painting. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've never done as uh -huh. many paintings as that one day. I think I did seven paintings in one day. It was, wow. it was the best seven day of my life. One day, yeah. Yeah. yeah.
Yeah. Best day of my life. Seriously, <laughs> so it's the best, best day, day of, of my, life. my life. Wow. And you know, um, it means so much to me because again, I captured it on paper. It's mine now. But also, while capturing all of that, I educated myself on Victorian um, on Victorian aesthetics. Yes, yes. On how it felt to be in a place like that. And honestly, after after visiting that hotel, I was like, I'm going to have a hotel. I'm going to have a hotel. <laughs> I'm going to make it happen. Whatever, yeah. whatever it takes yeah. me, I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to have a hotel. And then you get to do all the interior design. Yes. <laughs> and you get to do all the, and put the first uh, about Exactly, like, exactly. And that's why yeah. I do so much art because like I can already see different rooms. Like there's going to be a Titanic room. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a room that you would go when you had a horrible day and you feel like the world is crushing and you are just so depressed. That's where, that's the room that you would go to. You know, and that that painting would be of course would it's be gonna there. be right on. Yes. The, yeah, those yes, right will there. be right there. Yeah, um, yeah I just you know, it, right now that hotel is basically consuming all my um, all my headspace. That's so cool. You just yeah, you need just a tiny. Um, uh, even just one or two, three rooms, just the small thing to start mm -hmm. maybe, and then to see if you could yeah build it out. Yeah. You could even probably go on to um, platforms like uh, Airbnb and just inquire yeah. like with homeowners and be like, hey, I know you like rent out four yeah. of these rooms. Like, can mm -hmm. I be the uh, like interior designer? Those could be nice little practices also. For sure. Stuff like or that. Or there is Sonder, you know Sonder? Sonder. Yeah. It's, um, they, they also kind of, yeah, they have a hotel. It's similar to Airbnb, but they have hotels and they oh, rent nice. them out. Yeah, yeah, like perfect. Like, it's it's my dream company at the I time. Love it. That's actually. your next yeah like sto stepping stone. Yeah, that's so cool. So okay, so we got the yeah we did the the, um, the flower lamps. We got the watercolor, the oil paintings. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about the art communities. Yes. Okay, so B art. Yes, B this, art. This is San Francisco's art community, mm -hmm. go-to art community. You guys have such <laughs> cool events that you do. I loved coming to your event. It was mm -hmm. super fun. Um, but and enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. And it's a, so it's four of you total, right? It is four of four, us yes, who organizes us. that. But we, so we organize events every single Tuesday um, and we invite a lot of people. And on average we have, nowadays we have about mm, 12, people on average and we get together every Tuesday and we draw something uh, we co-create you know we yes. practice drawing because again like dreaming is fun but you have to have the right level of skills so how do you work on those skills you know you got to keep yourself motivated um, and what we do with this community is we we in we try to inspire each other really yeah. like not everybody does felt lamps like me but they do like some crazy abstract um, paintings and they're just so into it and that's how they keep me motivated yeah. you know um, and it's really it's really an amazing community I'm so glad that I found it and that I have can be a part of it um, it just really means a lot to have people who do similar things. Yep. Yeah. And specifically... We do figure drawing a lot. Figure drawing, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and also just, I also want to... Um, so, sorry, yeah, can I talk about yeah, this Please, one? please, yes. Um, for Pride, we, uh, we invited the transgender model um, and it was, it was great. Like, it, it was the best way to celebrate Pride for us, for artists, you know? Like... <laughs> It was, it was just a blast. You're doing a bunch of different, um, every Tuesday, you're doing- Every a, single Tuesday. Every Tuesday, you're doing a bunch of different, um, yeah. uh, well, like workshops, mm -hmm. but also people just getting together to do their art. And that right. in itself, so I wanna just do a quick bit on the importance of art community because it, it's as though um, that we're, we're, we're so much moving into like tech everything mm -hmm. that it's, it's hard to embed so, uh, like art into uh, our communities now. It's like no one is uh, paying me to be an art organizer. No one is uh, paying me, you know, because there's such mm -hmm. weird dynamics around the markets and how they um, potentially don't reward certain things that actually a lot of people are really interested mm -hmm. in. So 
We, yeah, so can you, like the importance of art community, like putting people together that are all really inspired mm -hmm. by art and that can all help each other, motivate each other, story tell through art to get other people inspired to be. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I hear it a lot, um, that it's, it's hard to be an artist in the city. And it is hard. I, I mean, yes. Um, Art is just by default is not as marketable as like software engineering, you know, um, like it's not there is little demand for it. Like people don't crave it. It's it's mm. a great add on um, to somebody's life, but there there is low demand for it. And I personally think it's fine. Art has its own purpose. Art doesn't have to be marketable. You can make art whatever you want to make it. Like for me, again, it's, it's a way for me to live the life that I want to live, to stay in a momentum. If I have money, but I don't have the momentum, I don't know, do I need life at all? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, and uh, what we try to do at the art, we actually do have a lot of people who do work at tech. And I myself work at tech as well uh, for my daytime job. Um, we, don't, we don't want to encourage people be bitter about it. Don't be bitter. Bitterness will not get you anywhere far. Mm -hmm. Be inspired, be art. Make what you want to make out of this life. Find a way and make it art. Make it artistry to find a way around those sharp corners, you know? Because, um, you know, like flowers, they don't bloom. Uh, I mean, they, they can get the right nutrients in the most poorest soil. They are resilient. So yes, there are many opportunities for artists. Uh, there are actually a lot of opportunities. But uh, it's harder to get opportunities for artists uh, in San Francisco right now. But that's your poor soil. And it's up to you to get the best out of it, get the right nutrients. Um, just don't be bitter. Just, just don't blame, don't point fingers at techies, techies, like whatever that means. Um, because um, they just bring their value to the world and you have your value to bring to the world. So concentrate on that. Yeah, and in just in general also making it easier, I think, for um uh, just changing our, our norms around art and making it a little bit more uh, evidently something that people uh, care more about and have an eye more for. Mm -hmm. let's, um, let's mention um, uh, on the future of art. Where do these things not only take you, but where do you see art going with the technology mm -hmm. industry and all this type of stuff? I think people are so creative. They're so creative. Um, I think it's just a tool, you know, um, like felting, it's, it's, it, felting is a tool, it's a technique. So you can find that technique is in a digital space if you wish to. Um, people are crazy creative. I think um, it's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to go anywhere. Do you, do you see it specifically maybe going into like um, augmented and virtual reality, le leveraging art yeah. and design there, maybe a little I'm bit. I'm actually very interested yeah. in that too. You are. Yeah. 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 Wouldn't yeah. it be nice to like design a world where like flowers and everything and butterflies? Yeah, and then you can walk through and get inspired by yeah. it, right? So you can basically take what maybe like Disney World is mm -hmm. doing and you can then like replicate it times like millions of examples of really beautiful creative right. environments that people could go in through and get inspired mm -hmm. by yeah. that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, democratize being able to make those environments, yeah, for people. Yes. Um, it's, um, I don't, I don't really, I don't think I have enough knowledge of like the state of art in the world. Because um, again, I'm very, you know, pointed at what I mm -hmm. want to get out of it. Um, that's a very global question. Yeah. I can't answer Adelia's it. Adelia is a very like I've identified a flower that I will start painting in watercolor right now. That's <laughs> Adelia, yeah. And, yes. And I'm like trying to comprehend macro level yeah, 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 things yeah. too. So this yeah. is these Which is why we we need all sorts of people. We do need you know? all sorts of people. Um, yeah. 
And I also want to show people, because I promised that we would do this, I want to yes. show people what the, f what the lamps look like without the our, lights. Yep, without our stage yes. lights. And <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, so this is what they look like. They look wonderful if you have, um, so it's a very nice light when you go to sleep and um, you know, like you don't want a harsh tran transition from full life to do lights to absolutely no light. Like you don't want that because then you can hit your pinky and then it's gonna hurt, you know? Um, so this is just the rightest light for going to sleep or any sexy times for me. Like it's I just it's just perfect. I got a plug, yeah, sexy time I, got a I plug. Can't, Reading. I can't really have sexy times without those without lamps. Without those honestly. lamps anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're just it. like a staple. They contribute to yeah. the enjoyment romance. of it. Yeah, yeah romance. Yeah, deep yeah, romance. They're very romantic by defin yeah. just by definition yeah. it's like a char enchanted rose kind of thing like it's romantic yeah 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 so yeah reading nightlight mm -hmm. romance all the different yeah, yeah well you can't really read with those i mean it depends depends if you angle it maybe yeah. towards your book and yeah, stuff. yeah 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 if you yeah. if you do like that, do that yeah it's easy to they, bend yeah they do so, angle yeah angle yeah. well Ooh. look they're kissing they're kissing <laughs> i love it <laughs> okay all right and let's let's all um let's wrap on our last couple questions Great. all right so Adelia, speaking of all this uh, macro level stuff, do you think we're in a simulation? I don't think so. Okay, tell us why. Oh my God. <laughs> I hope you wouldn't ask. <laughs> um, why are we not in a simulation? Why would we be in a simulation? I mean, um, I, I take life for what it is and I don't know any other version of it. I'm just trying to make the best out of it. So mm -hmm. uh, if if it is a simulation, I, I would also be fine with that, I think. Mm. I'm just trying to live my best life yes. in this simulation or non-simulation, in this yeah, yeah. thing called life. Yes, yes. And then what do you think is the most beautiful thing in the world? Would you guess it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, a beautiful peony. You know peony, the flower? Peony. Yeah, it's like, it's very lush. And oh my God, peonies are so beautiful. They're just the most beautiful thing in the world. How do you spell it? P-E-O-N-Y. Um, Flower. Yes. This one? Yeah, look at that. Okay. <laughs> yes. You think these, yes. yeah, you, so you, these yeah, are so the gorgeous. most beautiful thing yeah. in the world. Actually, this flower is, is I called it oh, it's peony. peony. <laughs> Interesting. Wow. <laughs> and, and you think, why is this the most beautiful thing in the world? Uh, for me, I mean, I can't say for everybody. For me, it just means, it's a very Victorian flower. It's a very ornate flower. So right now I'm on a Victorian chapter of my life. I love Victorian aesthetics and I want to turn my life toward that, um, that way. Um, so for me, it just like, it lays a path towards something where I want to go, which is why it's beautiful. Yes. Because my path is full of beautiful things and I just chase those things and I just make them happen one at a time. Love it. So. Adelia, <laughs> what a great episode on the value of art this <laughs> has been. Yeah, it's been so much fun. Thank you so much for inviting. Time. You're super welcome. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We greatly appreciate it. We would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below on the episode. Let us know what you're thinking. Also, do check out the links in the bio below. Again, that's seenandfelt.com as well as Adelia's Instagram. We would love for you to have more conversations with your family, your friends, coworkers, people online on social media about the importance of the value of art. And, and what art means to you, like how do you define you. it and yeah. what is it on your journey that you are taking, like why do you make art? Yeah, yeah. And actually going out after, as you dream and making and making and creating yeah. the art into the world, um, doing art community, get going with that everyone. Big shout out to Ron Vargas for producing and directing, thank you very much Ronnie. And also, 
everyone. Support the artists, the entrepreneurs, the organizers in your communities, the scientists, the spiritual leaders. Support them, help them grow, help them prosper. Support Simulation, our links are below, our Patreon, our PayPal, our cryptocurrency link, also our merch design link, join us in that effort. And go and build the future, everyone. Manifest those dreams into the world. Thank you so much for tuning in. We will see you soon. Peace.